Welcome to PC Woods Kids Tech Talk. Today we're looking at the Sapphire HD 6670, part of the entry level series of second generation DirectX 11 cards from AMD. Sapphire here has put together a pretty interesting card. It has the basics, just the VGA to DVI there, as you can see, and also the driver CD and manual. That's just about it. Now, like I said, being a entry level card, it has the Arctic cooling fan on it, and that's just about it. If you're trying to upgrade your PC that uh, doesn't have support for DirectX 11, for example, maybe you're using a uh, onboard built-in video card and you want to upgrade and get some more performance, this is really something that you would get because it supports all the latest and greatest technologies just like the high-end graphics cards without breaking the bank and having to spend that much money or without having to basically get a new power supply to power one of those high-end graphics cards. That's right, this will basically run on a 400 watt power supply and you do not need also the um, six pin power connector for it. Okay, it supports, as I mentioned earlier, the latest and greatest technologies so you will be able to watch all your Blu-rays, 1080p, you'll get your DirectX support, you'll get all the Affinity support that you need for three monitors, no problem. Natively, it's supported. You can actually hook up four monitors with the uh, display port. As I mentioned, this car is straightforward, simple, no connectors, just this nice looking fan from Arctic Cooling, which we've seen before that Sapphire uses. No power plugs here on the sides, no um, crossfire connectors, just the DVI display port and HDMI out. Okay, you can see here at the top it's smooth and straight. That's really about it. If you have a PCI Express 2.0 slot, no problem, it'll work. If you have 2.1, which is the newer version, perfect, you're set to go. Here is the test system that I'm going to be using the card on, okay? And um, like I said, it will work on an older board, older CPU, as long as you meet the minimum requirements and you have a 400 watt power supply and enough memory, you'll be okay. Now here we are in Windows 7 using GPU-Z, so you can see the Turks um, GPU information, 16 ROPs, 480 shaders, you can see the bus width 128 as opposed to 256 from the uh, higher end cards. 800 megahertz uh, core clock is very decent, memory clock is 1000 megahertz, and um, you can see here on idle right now it's on power saving mode, fan speed is about 39% and temperature is hovering about the 33 34 degrees Celsius as you can see right there and um, well we're gonna put this to test obviously and see how it performs but uh, when it comes to overclocking you can do some minor overclocking with this card okay so just keep in mind that the temperatures will go up when you do overclock a little bit okay now overclocking I got 925 megahertz and 1175 megahertz on the memory as you can see right here all I did was go into the Tri-XX here, Sapphire Tweak Utility, the Trix Utility here, and raised the core clock and memory clock. No need to touch any voltages. Left the uh, fan on automatic, and you can see there that the um, temperatures are basically about the same. They really haven't uh, changed. And uh, going up here on the benchmarks with 3D Mark Vantage, you can see here the GPU score, 6306. And just to give you an idea on how this compares with other previous generation cards and onboard video, you can see here how this GPU scores. So not too bad, not too bad. You get some pretty decent results. Just like any um, entry level card, graphics card, you don't run things on full blown, right, uh, settings. You run things on medium if you can, uh, high on some games depending on your resolution, your screen resolution. Here is the Cinebench results, Cinebench 11.5. Here are the Haven Benchmark 2.5 results, which test DirectX 11 and uh, Tessellation. You can see here um, the frames per second on minimum, max, and average. Okay. Now playing some games, yes, I did try Crisis 2. Why not? It's an entry-level card, but it still gives some fairly decent frames per second. Again, Crisis 2 isn't as demanding as the original Crisis Warhead game, so um, it's able to keep up. And again, I was running this on advanced settings. If I run it on gamer settings, which is not as uh, demanding, I'll get higher frames per second than this even. So, like I said, playing games, it's just a matter of adjusting your graphic settings 
so that way the video card can cope with it. And in this case, I'm running things on high just to test it, but you don't have to run it on high to get good results. You can run it on medium, no problem. Here's a Sniper Ghost Warrior. So this one actually was very smooth using an older engine uh, for graphics and um, very decent results. So as I mentioned earlier, this is an entry level card. Great to replace your existing onboard video if you're looking to upgrade. No need to get a new power supply. Slap it in your PCI Express slot if you've got one on the board and you're set to go. I'd like to thank Sapphire for providing it and I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.